So I get asked my thoughts on a certain skater or what I thought of some figure skating event that people saw on TV all the time. I started skating when I was four, competed for 12-ish years, and I still coach now, so, you know, go figure people would ask me for my opinion. I've gotten a few questions about my thoughts on what happened at the Olympics and to even explain what really happened because the mainstream media wasn't doing the best job. So I decided to make this video. If you don't want to watch the full thing, it is kind of long. My thoughts can pretty much be summed up by this one sentence. And you know, I really, really feel for all three of these ladies because they've been lied to manipulated and pushed to the limit to get them to these Olympics and the mirage fell apart for everyone to see. And yes, I filmed my reaction the other day so my hair and my outfit is different. Sue me. Anyways, let's dive into what happened. There are lots of details here so bear with me. So what happened is Russia's top competitor Kamila Vanieva, who is considered to be the favorite to win gold, tested positive for a banned substance aka doping. The test was from December of last year at Russian Nationals, but the results had been delayed, so they weren't uncovered until after the team event at the Olympics, and that was two weeks ago at this point. They had to halt the team event medal ceremony and scheduled emergency meetings with several anti-doping agencies, Olympics and figure skating committees, and figure out what the fuck was going on and if Camilla should be allowed to compete. In previous cases of what I guess you would call suspected doping, the person under investigation would be suspended for the duration of the investigation and then if they determined that they're guilty of doping an additional determined amount of time and they would not be allowed to compete during the investigation and the period afterwards. So just to provide you with a few examples of that, Maria Saltskova was banned for 10 years for a diuretic. Andrea Rajkin had her gold medal retracted later due to Sudafed. Jessica Cowling was suspended for eight months because they couldn't figure out where this banned substance was coming from, and then they found out it was from the preservatives in her cosmetics. Carolina Costner was suspended for, I think, 16 to 18 months for lying about the location of her boyfriend, and he was the one who tested positive for a banned substance. So for Camilla, her suspension was up in the air because she's 15 and considered to be a protected person which according to the World Anti-Doping Agency, or WADA, means she's incapable of being responsible for what's going into her body. She was provisionally suspended, but after not even a day, the Russian anti-doping agency, known as Rusada, lifted her suspension saying she could compete. No shocker there. Obviously, they want their gold medal contender to compete. But the International Skating Union and the International Olympic Committee were not having it and they had to appeal the Court of Arbitration for Sport, or CAS, for an emergency hearing to decide if Camilla would compete. Dun -dun -dun! She was allowed to compete, which made a lot of people in the skating community very unhappy, myself included. I believe a positive test is a positive test and she shouldn't have been able to compete, at least until a full investigation was performed. And like I mentioned before, this is something that takes weeks or up to many, many months, in some cases, even a year. Regardless of how anyone felt, she competed. And the short program went very well for her. She came out in first place with a two point lead. But then in the day between the short and the long program, she was subject to a media frenzy in the Olympic Village. There were cameras following her, reporters were handing her their questions, and she was seemingly always by herself when she wasn't on the ice. There's a now iconic picture of her coming out from practice by herself and just covering her face with her hoodie as she was passing by the press box. And this might be why her long program didn't go well at all. The pressure definitely got to her and I can understand why. She fell twice, she messed up on several other elements and she just looked deflated. Because of her lead in the short program and the high technical value of her long program, she still somehow ended up in fourth place. Um, her two teammates, though, ended up winning gold and silver. So that sounds like a reason to celebrate, right? Wrong. Camilla already looked upset before she even stepped off the ice. And then once she approached her coach, 
Her coach was already asking her questions like, why did you stop fighting completely? Somewhere after the Axel, you let it go. Why didn't you let go? And then when she got her scores, she started bawling. I mean, it was very hard to watch. She was so visibly upset and her she was consoled by a volunteer, a volunteer. And if that wasn't dramatic enough, there was a lot going on with her two teammates in the background too. Alexandra Trusova, who came in second, started yelling, making comments like, everyone has a gold medal, everyone, but not me. I hate skating, I hate it, I hate this sport. I will never skate again, never. And you knew about everything. She was pissed about the results. She had landed five quads in her program and she believed that she should have won. But instead, it was her teammate, Anna Sherbakova, who had won despite only landing three quads. And when Anna found out that she won, she wasn't jumping up for joy like you would have expected her to be. She was sitting by herself, holding a stuffed animal, looking rather upset. Another iconic image from this Olympics. And you know, I really, really feel for all three of these ladies because they've been lied to, manipulated, and pushed to the limit to get them to these Olympics and the mirage fell apart for everyone to see. I hate that it had to happen on such a big stage with so many people watching, but at the same time, if it hadn't been, things might have continued on as is, a situation that would be good for absolutely no one. And now we've reached the core of the scandal, the part that needs to be focused on the most, the coach of these three skaters, Iteri Tuberitze. Women's figure skating for almost the past decade has been dominated by teenage Russian girls. The one thing that they have all had in common, besides their nationality, their coach, Iteri. And since pretty much the 2013-2014 season, her students have topped and in many cases swept the podium at every single international event. First, there was Yulia Lipnitskaya, the little girl in the red dress at the 2014 Olympics. Then there was Evgenia Medvedeva, who dominated the podiums in 2016 and 2017, only to be dethroned by her teammate, Alina Zagitova, at the Olympics in 2018. During the 2019 to 2020 season, three students, Alexandra Trusova, Anna Shabakova, and Eliana Konstronaya, the three A, became eligible to compete on the senior circuit and dominated the season. Then in 2022 emerged Camilla Believa. These Iteri girls are known for their extremely difficult technical content and tiny lithe bodies that can be put into positions that just seem impossible. They're quite literally pushing the boundaries of women's figure skating and athletes, those who can't do these really hard jumps are struggling to keep up. But the secret to their success, it isn't very pretty. Terry's training methods are an open secret in the skating world, and they have raised quite a few eyebrows. Terry's girls are young for a reason. They learn and perform these hard jumps at a young age, often before puberty, because it is more beneficial aerodynamically to jump with a smaller body than that of a fuller-figured woman post-puberty. And her jumping technique, or lack thereof, is effective only if her skaters weigh as little as possible. They do their best to delay puberty by eating as little food as possible or by taking Lupron, a puberty blocker known to induce menopause, and they try to stay as skinny as possible by subsisting on powdered nutrients only and not drinking water during competitions. To make sure that they maintain strict control over their weight, they have daily public weigh-ins, and she emotionally and verbally abuses her students to make sure they stay in line. Obviously, all of this can take a toll on the body, and unfortunately for many of Terry's girls, they have an expiration date. When they reach a certain age, usually around 17 or 18, the technique Terry's team teaches simply becomes unsustainable. Many of them are forced to compete, even when injured. And at the Olympics, we definitely saw hints of this. Anna Sherbakova practiced with a heavily taped neck and ankle. For most of the 2021 season, she was practicing with a heavily taped neck and competition. 
Alexander Trusova had to withdraw from a competition in November 2021 because of an ankle injury, and it's no doubt that she probably had just barely healed from that before coming to the Olympics. And unfortunately, after a few years, their chronic injuries grow worse and worse as they finally begin to hit puberty. In some cases, they can't even jump anymore and are forced to retire. For example, Yulia Lipnitskaya retired at 19, citing recurring injuries as well as a long struggle with anorexia. Evgenia Medvedeva recently retired and said in an interview that she can now only jump the Salkow and occasionally a Tulup without any pain. And at age 22, she has permanent back damage and can't turn in one direction. And then, you know, our reigning Olympic champ from 2018, Alina Zagitova, announced an indefinite break from competition in 2019 at age 17, citing a hip injury. She hasn't returned since. That same year, Elena Kanishveva moved to train with the Terry at age 13. In January of 2020, she announced her retirement from single skating at the age of 14 because she could no longer jump due to a severe back injury. Another one of Uteri students, Daria Yusacheva, only 15 years old, in her first senior season was injured during the warm-up at a competition and she had to be carried off the rink. And now there are some girls at Uteri school that are landing quad jumps as young as age 11. And we have no idea how these quads are gonna affect their bodies and a big factor into the breakdown of their bodies besides everything that I just mentioned, is the doping of their skaters. I don't believe Camilla's story that her grandpa's heart medication entered her system because he coughed into a water glass that they shared. Sorry guys. Um, and then, you know, there are some people that will say that the test was a fluke, but you know, 2014 Sochi Olympics, Russia was found to have a state-sponsored doping program. Eteri students are state-sponsored and there have been many, many rumors of her giving out pill boxes or vitamin boxes to her student. And you know, the fact that the test results were so delayed in coming out is super sketchy. I can agree with that. But I think if the results came out earlier, Rusada would have brushed them under the rug like they tried to do to the Olympics. And they never would have even shared Camilla's positive test. Like we would have never known about it. And then there's also the fact that Camilla didn't just test positive for one heart medication, but three, only one, trimetazidine is banned. Trimetazidine was banned after 2014 because it was considered a metabolic modulator and found that it could give performance enhancing benefits. The other two that she tested positive for, hypoxin and L-carnitine, are not. But the presence of three heart medications in a young elite athlete is highly unusual. So, I, you know, alarm bells are ringing. no one's questioning in this. So what are the benefits of taking this trio? Um, they increase endurance, reduce fatigue, and promote greater efficiency of oxygen in the blood. Um, and that can definitely give a high level figure skater a significant competitive advantage. It means they can train longer, do more jumps, do more program run-throughs, which means that they can learn skills faster and they can have better endurance during their programs. It also means their bodies can break down faster since they aren't given a break with this constant training of hard elements, which is clearly something we're seeing with Terry students. At this point, we only know what substances Camilla has taken with one up for contention but I don't think it's out of the question to assume that E. Terry's other students have taken the same things Camilla has. Even before this whole Camilla doping scandal broke, there was reason to believe that E. Terry presided over a doping program. She's defended meldonium in the past, a substance which is banned by WADA, um, saying it's harmless and it does not help with highest, strongest, fastest, and only helps to recuperate the heart muscles. Um, this was a substance that landed tennis player Maria Sharapova a two-year suspension, so that's super sus. And then the doctor for the Russian figure skating team, who's always seen by Terry's side, is super sketchy. His name is Philip Shvetsky. 
first of all, he's an anesthesiologist. And then he also used to be the team doctor for the Russian rowing team. He was banned in 2017 over doping violations and then was reinstated by Russia in 2010. I don't make this up. He has also published research on using a xenon oxygen inhalation therapy on athletes to improve endurance through the growth of red blood cells. I know it's a lot, but this is a virtually undetectable form of doping since there is no test for it and it's banned by WADA. But despite this ban, Shvetsky allegedly applied for a patent to use xenon gas on athletes. Yeah, gonna leave that there. Um, I would also not be surprised if other Russian skating schools also dope since Eteri's girls are not the only one practicing quads anymore. The majority of the girls that are practicing quads are from Russia. It's not really happening as widespread in other countries yet. And so, you know, with all of this evidence, everything I've just shared about Eteri, the figure skating world hasn't done much about it. In fact, they've pretty much just celebrated Eteri's accomplishments. Before Eteri's girls, Russia had top female skaters like Irina Sluskaya, Maria Bryshskaya, and Elena Sokolova, but there was usually only one at a time making the podium at international events, and they had long-standing rivalries with women from you know other countries all over the world, so they weren't always meddling. And you know, then all of a sudden, year after year, Eteri has several skaters topping the podiums on both the junior and senior circuits out of nowhere. And so because of this, Eteri was credited with revolutionizing ladies figure skating. And in 2020, she was given the International Skating Union's inaugural Best Coach Award. You will also only hear praises for Eteri students from figure skating commentators um, and her students always end up at the top of the podium because of her close relationship with the ISU. So their lack of artistry or incorrect techniques often go overlooked, while for others they are not, and they get rewarded just for doing difficult jumps. And we saw this at the Olympics. Anna Sharbakova, who came in first, she definitely had more artistry than um, Alexandra Trusova. Which is why she was so upset that she didn't win because she had been told that if she just did these really hard quads that she would win and that artistry wasn't as important. You know, thankfully, you know, the winner did have both good artistry and um, hard elements. But there are so many skaters whose technique is textbook that didn't even end up on the podium. And, you know, Anna Sherbakova and Alexandra Trusova definitely had inflated scores because they were Terry's students. Their skating skills weren't as good and their technique wasn't as good as other skaters and yet you know they still ended up in first and second and unfortunately they didn't give this tr you know beneficial treatment to camilla so she ended up in fourth but that almost seemed intentional because why would they want her to be on the podium they knew that there would be this uproar that if this person who tested positive ended up on the podium so they didn't overinflate her scores as much as her two teammates and she ended up off the podium but my hat does go off to Kaori, who ended up in third place because that medal was so well deserved. Her skating was absolutely beautiful. While at the Olympics, two of Terry's students medaled, it's clear to me here that nobody really won. Terry's students have been victims of abuse, all for the sake of winning gold medals. They have not had their coaches or doctors stick up for them. Officials in the skating community have not stuck up for them. And particularly at this Olympics, no one was there for Camilla as her world was falling apart. And then there's all the other skaters, the ones who have always been clean. This is not fair to them either. They have been chasing something that is impossible to achieve without breaking your integrity or breaking your body. I truly feel for them. And I truly do not know where we are going to go from here. But it's clear we need to change something and it needs to happen fast. Otherwise, we're just going to see a large exodus of skaters and fan alike from the figure skating world. We're already starting to see that. Unfortunately, it is happening already. Worlds is happening in a few weeks, in the beginning of March. 
I have no idea if Camilla will be allowed to skate there or what other skaters from both Russia and other countries will decide to compete. I would love to see skating federations and skaters themselves boycott worlds to send a message that they won't allow doping in our sport. But at that same time, I can understand that worlds is such an important competition for these skaters and I wouldn't want them to have to give that up for something that they shouldn't even have to deal with. Like, they shouldn't have to do this at all. Which is why it is so important that the ISU does something about what's going on in both with Terry and Russian skating schools in general. And you know, I really hope no one takes this as me trying to start a conspiracy against or spreading propaganda about Russian skating. I admire Russian skaters for both their tenacity and their skating. I just want to make sure that this is a clean sport that is fair for everyone. In trying to figure out where we go from here, I suggest the ISU starts with an investigation into a Terry and her coaching team, then looks at all schools within the Russian Skating Federation to make sure this isn't a larger doping problem change the judging system to create one that is more fairly balanced between technical and artistry, and potentially raising the age limit to avoid these age loopholes like we saw in Camilla's case at the Olympics. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much for sticking around and watching. I love the sport so much and it breaks my heart to see all the corruption that's going on inside of it. Um, no medal is worth giving up your health. I hope that we can eventually reach a point where everyone agrees with that sentiment.